great to be here again. I was here actually last Tuesday with colleagues with uh, with Willie and Maria and a lot of our councillors. I was out in Moy Ross and I was down at the Cleve site in Limerick 2030. I've already been last year down at the Opera site. So regeneration in Limerick is a, are, are two things that are that are intertwined, and there's a lot of really good work happening. Today's a very significant day. And to be, delighted to be joined by John Coleman and Derville and the team from uh, Alan and the team from the LDA in relation to the launch of the draft spatial framework for the for the Colbert Quad, which is a full regeneration and redevelopment of, of this area, linked to the train station to, to public transport as well. That will deliver thousands of homes, but also inward investment as well through uh, real commercial opportunities, opportunities on, on the education, both third and fourth level health as well and this is an example of how we're getting all the state agencies working together with the LDA and that was the purpose of housing for all that we launched just the week before last is making sure that we're activating idle state plans for the good of our people so being able to develop homes for our people both affordable social and in some instances indeed private so this is what we're seeing is the policy becoming a reality one of the things that that government and that I as housing minister prioritized was making sure that the land development agency was set up on a legislative footing and now we can get capitalised and we've allowed for additional additional borrowing and funding so that the LDA will have a fighting fund of about three and a half billion in the short term to be able to get out and develop sites in conjunction with Limerick City and County Council. We've been incredibly progressive here. So today actually the, the Culver Quarter site and uh, um, the website for public consultation has been opened. So the really important thing is our local communities and talking to our sports clubs and our schools and our residents here and talking about the vision that the LDA have in conjunction with their partners in CIE, Ernold Aaron and the HSC about how we can really unlock the colossal potential that is here. Our job now is to turn that vision into a reality on the ground. So it's a very significant day. John, do you want to mention that? Yeah, just to, to, to... You want to come in, John, if you're going to speak, yeah. Yeah. so we get to be framed properly. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks sir. Sir. Just to add to the Minister's points, uh, it's really a unique opportunity state lands, but also to bring forward in a coherent way very large uh, rejuvenation areas uh, and land assembly and land of state lands. So we have the land of the city centre right on the main train line, the train station has 50 hectares of state lands owned entirely by the state that can be brought forward to deliver a new city core for Limerick. So that's what we're here to uh, announce and launch our vision on today, and that's what we want to hear from the public on. When do you think you will see actual bricks on the ground and a change to these neighbourhoods that you mentioned? So we need to listen to what people's feedback is first and feedback from the community, which we hope to do, and that's open to the of November. Uh, then we'll coordinate with the development plan process for, for, for Limerick City. And uh, after that is complete, and once the master plans have agreed and we've taken on board feedback, uh, we hope to bring forward uh, planning applications uh, thereafter. So we would be appointing design teams as soon as we have finalisation of the master plan uh, sometime next year. Given the labour shortage in the construction sector, given the, the high cost of materials at the moment, I mean, how would you plan on delivering affordable homes on such a large scale? And, you know, is it actually an achievable plan? It is achievable. Um, labour... Uh,
funding for new homes, both new social homes, but new affordable homes. And that's what was so important about the Affordable Housing Act, to get that in place. So we've over 4 billion euro in affordability funds. So people here in Limerick and all over the country who are struggling to save or paying rent, you know, are going to be able to have an opportunity to own their own home, where the state is going to support them. We're also bringing forward measures around cost rent, which didn't exist 12 months ago. So a whole new tenure of housing for, for, of housing for working people in a cost rental model where we've the first tenants in place in situ already. So the good question is, like we've got a plan, Limerick will be planned properly. This is this is Durban might, might add to this. This you're looking at a, at a 20 year vision for Limerick. But we're looking at nearer term delivery where we can as well. We need homes now. But in, in conjunction with work that they've done with the local authorities. The plan and the vision to be able to identify the different state sites within within this this area, what we're going to do in each of them, how we're going to connect it with the rest of Limerick City. Do you want to? Yes, thank you, Minister. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the spatial framework is a draft framework that's open for consultation today until the 11th of November. The whole idea for this is that it is a framework that's going to shape and guide the development of this area. If you can imagine where we are, it's quite open at the moment. But what we're going to do is, you know, look at how you can.
that is determined to deliver and uh, deliver it for people. You know, all the talk and all the discussion, and all the debates and designs and this step and the other, but it's really included what we want is delivery on the ground. We want actual houses for our people, and that's what this is Minister, can I ask you on the relation to today's issues of the day, can I ask you, what is your view of whether the teacher should start an inquiry into the leaking of cabinet business? I think there's always, look, the cabinets must be confidential in business that's carried out at cabinet. It's crucially important that the cabinet confidentiality is respected. Previously, the Secretary General of the Department of the Teacher has obviously issues uh, guidance along that as well. So that's a matter for the Taoiseach and for, and for Martin Fraser. But as a cabinet minister, what I would say to it is it's crucially important that when we're working together as a group, that, that, that anything that's, that's discussed in the room stays in the room, because that helps in decision making. And sometimes we've had to make extremely difficult decisions uh, as, a, as a government over the last over the last year and a bit, particularly due to the pandemic. So look, the Taoiseach is more experienced than I and obviously has continually reiterated the importance of that we that we do our work together in a collaborative way. Minister, do you regret Affordable Housing Act in place. That's the first piece of affordable housing legislation ever passed. Okay, most comprehensive, and it's done, and now it's backed by funding to the tune under housing for all of over 20 billion. And an affordability measure is just over 4 billion nation. So that's going to do a number of things. It's going to bring cost rental uh, in, which has started already within 12 months. It'll bring affordable purchase, council led affordable purchase, which is which is being done where we'll be able to deliver thousands of homes across the country for working people. And it will bring the home first shared equity scheme in place, which we're working through the detail of. And I would expect that particular element of the scheme, which is time bound and focused, to be in situ in the first quarter of next year. But what's really important for people is the people outside the doll, outside of, of the Oroptus, who want to own and buy a home at an affordable rate, who want to rent a home at an affordable rate in a secure rental situation that cost rental uh, delivers. So what I'm focused on as Minister, as Deputy Willie O.T. said, is actually delivery in these areas. There's a lot of talk back and forth all the time, a lot of debate back and forth. We have a plan now that, in my view, is going to work and it's going to make a real difference for people, and I'm focused on delivering. Can I speak to a head I know we're, work we're working really well with the Department of Finance and with the Central Bank, and their input has been absolutely crucial and particularly around the element that was one of the criticisms that was levelled at a new idea, and I get some people don't like change, and that's fine, they want to keep things, they not want to see progression in housing. I do, our government does. Uh, it doesn't suit some political narrative to see a government progressing and making a difference in that space. This will be an equity stake that the state will take. It's not debt led, and we've agreed that arrangement. Now we're working through the details. Sorry, just to Sorry, just to Yeah, have you used Can it go ahead without central bank? The scheme's, go, the scheme's going ahead, and the scheme will be in place at the start of next year. And what we'll be doing is publishing, publishing the regulations of that before the end of the year. I've already published the cost rental ones. Again, that's something that didn't exist 12 months ago. Okay, so we've got people now renting for 50% of the market rent, families in place now in secure tenancies. Okay, that's happening. That's actual delivery. And we want to scale it up. That's what we're going to do. Minister, Go uh, just uh, first, I, I appreciate that. But I think but hold, on, hold on. Uh, she was in. She was in for okay, that's fair. Minister, you're aware of the student housing issue in Limerick at the moment. Students having to stay in hotels to make the COVID room a week. Uh, are you in discussion with any of the stakeholders here at the moment in order to resolve this very immediate issue? It is. It's, a, it's an immediate and a very serious issue as well. I actually discussed it with Simon Harris earlier this week as Minister for Higher Education. We've actually had bilateral meeting ourselves next week on this very issue. I think what it speaks to is when we're trying to deal with housing is everything's interconnected. So from student housing or students competing with families to rent to people not being able to buy to people who are hopeless that we're focused on and getting them accommodation. But it's a serious issue for students right now. Some of them are paying three, four hundred euro a week and their families are paying to stay in hotels. We've got to see how we can expand student accommodation all across the country. I know Minister Simon Harris is is dealing with that very thing, but I'm meeting formally with Minister Harris actually next week on this particular issue. There has been engagement through higher education and with the university sector in this space as well. If you look at certain parts of the country, you've seen a big increase in purpose-based student accommodation. 
but not necessarily for all students can, can actually get into it. And that hasn't been across the country in a consistent way. Limerick, we have a particular issue that I'm absolutely committed to, to working with Simon and helping Simon Harris actually deliver additional student accommodation in this area to try to alleviate an immediate problem that you write. Sorry, on to that, have you any ideas yourself as to what the solution is to have this? On student accommodation? Well, I think that's taken take a, a small step back. Look at last year what happened with the construction shutdown. We delivered 33,000 homes and, and that feeds into both the private residential sector to home ownership to social housing and indeed to student accommodation. We're 13,000 short because of COVID. This year we've seen a pick up in the last couple of months. Okay, but we're probably at best do about 22,000 housing conditions, 11,000 short. So supply affects it. So what's important about plans like housing for all is that the state now will be delivering about 50% of the homes to afford in the summer. So that's actually going to happen. We need to get supply up. And we need to get supply up for student accommodation that's affordable for students. Now, in the short term, I've brought in legislation to protect students, okay, to make sure that, that students themselves are covered by the residential tenancy support, to restrict the amount of deposits any landlord can ask of, of, a, of a student. That's something that the USI and other student union representatives had looked for for years, and we've delivered that within the first 12 months. Not going to be solved overnight, uh, but there is an immediate focus on the student accommodation issue right now. Is it acceptable okay. for, is it acceptable for, for landlords to be advertising what appears to be very substandard accommodation? In one instance in Limerick, an advert for a, a kitchen with two bunk beds put inside it, right totally beside another. Totally and totally utterly unacceptable. I've seen some of these advertisements and I say to people where accommodation is substandard, complaints can be made and can be routed either through the local authority or to the RTD. I've seen some what are called studio type apartments which are literally beds and kitchens. That's wrong uh, and, and thankfully it's not wholesale but uh, where instances and where standards are not met and are not met that the RTD will deal with it. And we've, if you look at the investigations carried out by the Residential Tenancy Board over the last two years, they've been increasing time and time. But we need to build a sustainable centre for our students, a sustainable, safe private rental sector for people. Uh, but how does that happen? It happens by delivering more homes, more affordable, more social homes, which we're going to do. You know, we're averaging about 10,000 during the course of this plan, 54,000 affordable homes, and about another 160,000 private homes. And that's when you look at where we are here in Limerick, in the Colbert Quarter here. The potential to deliver homes at scale, student accommodation here, educational facilities here, all of that is what, that's going to be in this place. If you look at what's happening now in Limerick already, boots on the ground in Opera, in the Opera Quarter, where, it is, where we provided as a government funding under the Urban Regeneration and Development Fund. I was in Cleves last week, and you see the real opportunity in Cleves Quarter as well to develop you know, commercial, uh, hospitality, and residential. So look, it's, it's all happening in this system. And just one last question. Just one last question on it. Yeah, we are, uh, Mike, that's my question as well. Yes, sure. Yeah. There's a survey out today where the Mike actually did a very I know very well, yeah. And now it's yeah. We've worked really well with the, with residents and I've, I was in Clare only a few weeks ago in Donegal last year actually. I've committed to improving the scheme that the previous government brought in or just came in last last February as well. So I know for homeowners the stress that they're under um, and we're working to resolve it. So what happened this morning is my understanding is that the action groups for two particular counties will be giving their submission to us. We're going to assess that. I've obviously, as I said, I want to be able to bring some improvements to the scheme and try to bring a resolution to this in the next few weeks. I'll have to go to Canada for some of the changes. If they require additional expenditure, which I expect it will do, uh, and obviously um, the groups understand that too, that that's something we would like to do. But look, I, this, this is a terrible scourge for people, for families, that literally their homes are, are crumbling in front of and we want to help and that's what I've been doing. I met with the group in Cavan last week as well um, and you know I think it's, it's well I've taken nothing off the table I've said that uh, I've said that time and time again is that okay guys we gotta go we like this